Hi everyone, thanks for watching weatherweb.net. I'm registered meteorologist Simon Keeling and this is your look ahead video. Actually, it's less of a look ahead, more of a heads up because there's so much that's going on in the world of weather just at the moment. If you do want a detailed forecast for the next day or so, then check out our fast forecast. The link is on the screen here. That will give you all the very latest information for the next few hours on the snow and on the uh, cooler conditions. This was the scene on the A1 this morning, thanks to uh, Mike Dyson, who actually is my brother-in-law, uh, for sending this picture. And that was the scene that was uh, quite familiar across much of the country during today, as snow showers affecting many areas. Now, on my soapbox yesterday, wasn't I? Uh, and lots of you were <laughs> putting some pretty positive feedback about that. Uh, a, a mini soapbox today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the Times has uh, reported on the cold weather uh, that we're about to get and uh, in a piece in today's newspaper it actually says that we're about to be hit by an arctic blast of cold weather after the recent unseasonably mild conditions. Unseasonably mild? Come on. No, it's not unseasonably mild. This is the temperature anomaly map for January so far. And you can see here, look, temperatures generally around normal but actually below normal across Scotland in January so far. Yes, there's been one or two milder days, but you would no way describe it as being unseasonably mild. And again, it's just one of these examples of language being used that doesn't reflect what the actual situation is. It's, it's almost like the world's gone mad, isn't it? That it, you know, that it seems that if they just tell you long enough and hard enough that uh, this is the way it is, then will believe it, but it's it's crazy because it's not. It's been an average January, and yes, it's going to go colder. As the anomaly chart for the next week shows, this is temperature anomaly then for the next week from Carsten Houston's site. Uh, and look, it shows us temperatures below normal. All those blue colours there across the UK and across much of France, Germany, running into the low countries across northern parts of Italy, actually through central parts of Italy as well. So temperatures are going to be colder, there's no doubt about it, but it hasn't been unseasonably mild. Seems that weather is fair game to print any old rubbish. Uh, anyway, so uh, back to today. Interesting satellite picture from midday. Um, this is the trough that brought the heavy snow showers across northern England, through Wales and through the Midlands during the uh, course of the day. That's going southwards. Actually, it's all associated with uh, a trough at 500 millibars that I'll show you uh, in just a moment on the charts. Uh, but it's this feature out here, look, to the west of Scotland that we're really interested in. That's a little O that's spinning itself up and it's going to be heading its way southeastwards like that through this evening and overnight. Some really heavy snow showers look for northern and western parts of Scotland, northern and western Ireland. And just in here, you can see the hills poking through, completely covered in snow. And uh, also, while we're on about it, and some of the features on the satellite picture, um, that's an interesting one too, out there, look. Um, be interested to know what that feature is. Um, it's got to be something to do with the uh, winds coming in and, and causing some sort of effect out here in the North Sea. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. You see, I don't know all the answers. I may have a doctorate, but uh, the weather still amazes me every single day. Um, but there's that little low. Uh, this is the pressure chart for midday today. Watch that low as we move on through the chart sequence. Six o'clock this evening, it's just to the west of Scotland. Now, that little low is going to be bringing with it an area of more concentrated showers. In fact, there it is. So then as it moves into the Irish Sea through this evening, to the first part of the night, it will concentrate uh, winter showers through Ireland, through Wales, into northwest England, and then get disrupted by the Welsh mountains. But it may well put some winter showers through the Midlands, through northwest England, through southern England during the early hours of the morning, adding to the potential for accumulations of snow. And then, as you can see, by six o'clock in the morning, it's off the southeast coast, virtually cleared away. But it may be that these here, these showers, fall as sleet and also snow. And then we pick up the secondary low, which is uh, actually, no, it's not the secondary low, it's the main low, which is off eastern Scotland uh, tomorrow morning. Rain bands rotating around that, pushing southwards. And actually, that does have some slightly milder air trapped within it. So most of that precipitation falling at low levels as rain and sleet, but as snow over high ground. 
The big question, of course, is coming up to well, how long is the cold weather going to last? Uh, this is the temperature prediction from the GFS Ensemble, and it goes for 15 days. It's the red line we're interested in here. Look, notice how the temperatures fall off. We become really cold during next week. Um, Cold compared to average, okay, we're not talking 1963, 1947, uh, cold compared to average, and there may be some more snow showers around next week, but then look, showing this rise in temperatures around the 5th, 6th, 7th. Now, um, that goes along with our long range forecast, which was kind of going with those ideas that this would be a hit for about a week's worth of cold weather, and then temperatures would be slowly recovering, and the ensemble trying to pick that up as the winds go back into the west. Now, one of the features that we're watching out for is Monday. This is the pressure chart for midnight on Monday. It's this area low pressure here. Forecast to be west of Ireland, but it could be here, it could be here. And as that feature moves southeastward during Monday, it's uh, going into colder air and it brings the possibility of some snow within that sort of area. Now, at the moment, the forecast is for most of that snow to miss the UK, for it to be on this track, move down here, and actually perhaps only a little bit of sleet affecting the far southwest of England. But we need to watch it because that feature deepens as it moves southeastwards, and it only needs to be a little bit further north into here. And suddenly we're in the position where much of central, southern England, as well as Wales and Ireland, could be in for uh, a spell of proper wintry, snowy conditions. Now, at the moment, you probably go with a less than 30% risk of that happening, but certainly the chance is there. And we maintain the cold northwesterly winds across the rest of the country, further snow showers across the north and west. Just show you uh, how much colder it goes across Europe during the coming week. This is the snow depth um, chart from this morning, and this is predicted snow depth chart for Monday. And then here's how things look through Friday of next week. You notice that snow encroaching its way westwards, particularly across Central Europe, across the UK, most of it across Scandinavia and Russia. But just notice how much there is across northern Iberia and through parts of Italy as well. So we're not on our own with the uh, cooler weather uh, that's now with us. That's going to be affecting much of Europe. Now, the CFS seeing developments like this into February. This is the week one forecast, putting low pressure off towards the east. There's our north to northwesterly flow. Big ridge building out in the Atlantic during week one. Week two, um, it tries to split off the trough to the south, to the north. We've got the ridge in here, ridge in here, tries to get us into a briefly into a northeasterly but you see here look the westerly is trying to get back in trying to break through and this is my idea of around the seventh for uh, a change more to a westerly but prior to that staying pretty cool and then week three the cfs builds pressure down to the south so brings up a southwesterly jet to the north of scotland builds pressure to the south now it could be that actually at the surface we go into a cooler east to southeasterly flow could go quite frosty um, during the middle part of the month it's kind of what we were saying we, we said we needed to watch out for a stormier period sort of the 17th up to the 22nd somewhere within that sort of time frame um, you wouldn't see it on the CFS but we had gone with this idea that the high was going to try and build in and that that would try and be there for the end of the month now it's not as strong as I'd want it to be but it shows the idea of a trough in week four from the 19th to the 25th up towards the north look here's the ridge off towards the south and I think what could happen is that as we get some sort of warming of the southern part of that trough, it actually tends to recede northwards. And the effect of that trough receding northwards is that we pick up a ridge through the southern part of the UK. Yes, we've still got the jet up towards the north, but with the ridge across the south, that then leads us into the drier, brighter conditions at the end of February, although probably with some sharp overnight frosts. I'll leave you with that for now. Don't forget, if you want to forecast for the next couple of days, watch Gary's fast forecast. The link is on the screen here. But for now, whatever you're doing, thanks for watching and keep the sun shining. Bye for now.